guys, welcome back to another DIY decorating video. Today I am sharing the process of my entryway and hallway makeover. So kicking things right off, the first thing to start this project that I did was rip out and replace all of my baseboards. When I moved into this house, all of the baseboards were just small, standard, builder grade type of baseboards with a shoe molding. And I wanted to replace them with something that just looked a little bit more custom and updated. So here's just kind of an overview of what my entryway and hallway looked like before. This was actually one of my very first woodworking projects in this house. And my dad was here visiting and so he was able to help me do this. My dad was able to rip off all of the existing baseboards using a hammer and a spatula and he did give me grief for not owning a crowbar, so I do now own one of those. And the new baseboards I chose to do are just a standard five and a half inch pre-primed pine baseboard, and I chose to not add the shoe molding this time. I have not replaced all of the baseboards in my house yet, but that is something I am hoping to tackle one room at a time. So here's a really good look at between the old and the new. Hey you guys, so I just wanted to give you a quick look at the newly installed chair rail and baseboards. So I just want to apologize, like I wish I could have shown, like filmed more of the process of installing all this. So today I literally just finished caulking for the second time some of the edges. We already did all the, the edges up here, but I went back and re-caulked some of the nail holes down here because they the caulk kind of had sunk in and then I recocked a lot of these little corners here so just to try to get these to look as clean as possible no gapping also on the floor so, like this is unfortunate looking but you can see my old baseboards here and then the new ones here so eventually the plan is to have this everywhere in the house Alrighty, so I just finished taping off all the floors. Went relatively quick since it's not too much. I used my trusty little gift card here to really seal in the edges of the painter's tape. Unfortunately, this little loaf blob here is going to have to get quarantined away since he loves to rub his body on the walls. <laughs> After all the new molding was nailed in, caulked, and ready to go, I started with my painting of the baseboards and molding details. So I'm using the same molding paint I've used all around my house, which is a bright white semi-gloss finish. I'm gonna go ahead and try to link all of my favorite painting tools down below in the description box for you guys. So I think I ended up doing two coats of the semi-gloss on all of the trim work. And I wanted the lower half underneath the chair rail to kind of feel like paneling, so I carried over that white semi-gloss paint onto the bottom half of the wall as well. I used a small sponge roller, which was really efficient. And then for painting the upper half of the wall, I use painter's tape to tape off all of the chair rail trim that I had just painted to make sure I get crisp, clean edges. And the color that I'm using on the walls is called Aesthetic White. I've used it in many other rooms in my homes and I've been very happy with it. Since there is almost zero natural light in this hallway area, I wanted to make sure it didn't feel super enclosed. The previous color wasn't terrible, but it was just kind of a yellowy toned beige, which is not my cup of tea. And here's a quick look at what the space looked like after I finished painting everything before I started decorating. Really love the bright white and the clean lines of my new trim. So 
So as far as decorating in the entryway goes, I knew I wanted to feature this large vintage mirror that I have, and I ended up giving it a pretty major facelift that you guys will see a little bit later in the video. I just think this piece is so gorgeous and it has such amazing detail. Well, you guys, I am going to keep it real with you because my projects almost rarely go as planned and it's not all butterflies and rainbows. The giant mirror I had hanging up here fell down. I have it sitting over here for now. The hook that I was using was rated for up to 100 pounds and it ripped straight out of the drywall. And luckily it didn't fall all the way to the ground, it didn't shatter anything, but it hit right into my table, left some big old marks, and worst of all, it ruined all my new chair rail here. All this caulk was cracked and pulled out, left some big old marks, and it cracked a good amount of the way down. So literally from here, all the way down to here, it cracked my cock. And it cracked the wood itself in a couple spots. Uh, this happened yesterday, so I've calmed down a little bit, but yesterday when this happened, I literally could have cried. I am seriously so upset over this. Not happy, so what I'm gonna do is, of course, I'm gonna fix it. I'm going to pull my nail gun back out and nail this in a couple more times to the studs. You can see it came loose, like, very little, but still, it's loose. And then I'm gonna scrape all this caulk back out for this whole section here, scrape it out, re-caulk it, and retouch up the paint. And I just ordered a new kit on Amazon to hang this mirror up. That is a different one that'll hopefully hold better. It's got anchors included in it. So, huge bummer, but hopefully I can get it sorted out. So after the mirror debacle, I ordered some new heavy duty hooks from Amazon. And these have been holding multiple very heavy mirrors in my house for six plus months now, so I can definitely recommend them. And now Sam and I are hanging up the newly refinished mirror. And then I'm adding my doorbell cover back on and the vent cover, which I also gave a white spray paint to because it was kind of that off-white color. I knew I wanted to do some gallery style frames down this long hallway. I picked up four frames from Target and I added these little rubber cushions onto the backs of them, which I think is very, very helpful when you wanna keep your pictures straight so that when people are slamming doors and whatever, they don't shift around. And if you look closely, you will see I screwed up the nails multiple times. So there are a few whoops holes under these frames. And here's a little overview of what my decorated space looks like. And also you guys, I just wanna make it clear that this entire project start to finish took me about eight months. I didn't do all of this in like a week or a couple of days. These frames seriously sat on my wall empty for probably six months. guys I wanted to do kind of my reveal and tour more vlog style so I can explain some of the updates just a little bit better and go into more detail so coming from my front door area uh, you can see a better look at some of the the chair rail and molding I am really happy with how this turned out I know that the lower half and upper half look like they they are the same color but they're not so first off I put this piece of artwork up here which is actually I think it's charcoal and it was done by my great-grandmother so that has sentimental value to me and then moving right over to like my entryway table. So if you came in the front door, this would be the first thing you see. Here's my decor. 
basically everything is thrifted or secondhand or DIY. The table itself I think came from Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, offer up one of those resell apps. I think I only paid 40 bucks for it. It is not in perfect condition. It's got some dents and scratches and whatnot in it, but I thought it was really beautiful. I love the legs on it. It's got a really classic look. I literally tried out three or four different lamps on this table and this is the one I ended up going with. It is actually from my mom and this was in my house growing up, so it is a little bit nostalgic. And then I just kept the decor really, really simple. This little topiary is from Ikea. And then I have a stack of some pretty books and this little chinoiserie kind of container. It's glossy white. Uh, this came from, yeah, Hobby Lobby clearance, $5. <laughs> so, like I said, everything is very budget friendly. And then the beautiful mirror that I have hanging over here was also secondhand I bought from Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace. The owner said it was from the late 1800s. I don't know if that's true, but you can tell that it definitely is old. But I did give this a, a gilded makeover. The paint was very, very faded from the original gold that it was. And so I gave it a little bit of a facelift using my favorite gilding paint. And then my rug I've had for quite a while. This is the second one of these rugs I've bought. I have another one in my laundry room. They come from Target. They're extremely budget friendly and they hold up really well and you can wash them in the washing machine. And moving around to, there's my staircase. And I have this plant here that is looking pretty sad. I just had to trim off some of the branches because they were dead. I don't know if this Majesty Palm is gonna make it, but I'm hoping it does. The plant stand I recently bought from at home that was also on clearance. I think I paid about 10 bucks for that. This is the doorbell for our front door. I just gave it, it was like a dirty off-white color and I just gave it a spray paint with some white satin or semi-gloss paint. So then for my hallway, I knew I wanted to keep it really simple with these gallery style frames. Unfortunately, you can see my thermostat is right smack dab in the middle of this wall. So what I did was just kind of use that as the center point in hanging all of my picture frames. I also printed all my pictures in black and white just to keep them very minimal and kind of consistent looking. So my boyfriend Sam and I love to travel. We've done a lot of traveling together. So the pictures I picked are all from some different travels we've done. I'm not gonna go into depth because I really don't think anyone cares, but these frames came from Target and normally I buy my frames from like mostly Hobby Lobby I would say, but I am really impressed with the quality of Target. I paid probably just a little bit more, but the wood is really, really pretty. It feels high quality. Another thing is that there was no stupid stickers on the glass that I had to like scrub and scrub and scrape to get off. So that was a really big plus. And because these are square, the matting has it so you can do vertical or horizontal five by seven pictures, which was also very appealing to me. So it can keep the consistent look. And again, here's kind of how my baseboard and chair rail look. They are not perfect. Some little imperfections there that maybe eventually I will try to sand out. The caulk kind of squeezed and created this little rib. Also, I had initially intended to get a runner rug to go in this space. I bought one off of Wayfair, I put it down, I didn't love it. I really thought I needed one, but now I'm not sure if it's like necessary or if it looks fine alone. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. The other big thing that we recently did that upgraded the space was change out the light fixtures. So I swapped out the boob lights for these prettier, still kind of boob light, but they have a little bit more detail and I think they definitely helped elevate the space a bit. If you are still watching this video, that means you liked it. So please make sure you give it a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button down below for more DIY decor videos just like this one. Thank you guys so much for watching. I truly appreciate it. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye.